everyone. My name is Satan or less a vamp on the internet. Uh, and today I'll be playing you Isa, our rogue warlock. She goes by she, her. I go by any pronouns. Hi, everybody. I'm Zachary Valdo. And today, as always, I am playing your blind Domfear wild oracle, Arat Chishin. Uh He doesn't particularly care about pronouns just like me. He is fine. Anything's fine so long as it's not derogatory. Yeah, they, I'm Avi. I'm your local indigenous nerd. And tonight I will be our Fiskorth, our hooling cleric of Keening, and our moms picked out our pronouns. So we're both she, her. Hello, everybody. I'm RJ, and today I'm playing Sulong Shen. We both go by he, him. He is a druid barbarian, and I'm a general menace. And that just leaves me, everyone. Hey, everybody. I'm Sarah Roberts, and I use any pronouns, and I'll be your GM for this evening. So. Last we left off, all right, you had a heart-to-heart -heart with the local head of the temple, Duval, uh, who chatted a bit about what had been going on, and you filled him in on a little bit of what happened at the mayor's dinner. Yuiza, you and precious stinky boy made your way about town saying your goodbyes and um, getting into maybe a little bit of trouble. You're you're still not quite sure. We're, we're still avoiding that. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we did lose Abby, but we're just going to say that Fiskorth was keeping Amelie, uh, company for most of the afternoon. And Sulong got to spend some quality time with Nismat in the training ring, uh, and also our favorite little pink kobold, Twu Wuv. And so, where would you all like to pick off this, pick up this evening? Are you going to Zasafel Petaurus's funeral? Are you just going to call it a night and get ready to travel in the morning? The choice is yours. I know that was something I was going to bring up to the group, but if we just want to make that call without a discussion, I'm totally fine with that as well. Fifth Squirth is going to probably be in the middle of packing. She's gone full anxious group, Mom. Everyone gets snacks. Do we have enough water skins? Ugh, my skin's sensitive. I'm going to need to bring this. So like probably as Avrat like walks into the room, she's like, taking inventory in that very, we are going in on vacation and I am mom way. Um, for Yuisa, before um, she leaves, she would like to visit the temple. Okay. And um, she is going to bring with her the blade that they found on uh, Zazafel, which is, uh, I think has a white raven or his handle is a raven wing I think um, and it's going to leave it in the altar of the raven queen uh, Salong doesn't have a lot to uh, pack anyway so I believe he'll be just sitting where the group had planned to meet sharpening a dagger or something You can definitely do that. Um, we're going to say that uh, Yuiza, uh, were you all going to go to the funeral or no? Sulung has said that he will not be going to the party. No, Yuiza probably went to the temple during the funeral, but did not go to the funeral. Wait, was the funeral in the main? Yeah. Yeah. So it, we're, we'll go. Since you guys aren't interested in attending, we're going to go ahead and say that uh, all of this is happening the next morning. Uh, as you are dropping things off. Um, and uh, as you are getting back, uh, Ivy is there uh, at the farm where you've all gathered, uh, loading you up with, with more food. Uh, Yuisa, there is another fresh basket of baked goods, uh, just in case you ate the ones that she gave you the night before, uh, as well as some <laughs> some blankets for you all and two tents, should you need them. I hadn't considered the tents. Oh my goodness. I look inept, but <laughs> thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, they're not as big as the other ones. We were concerned that we might need these in case some other folks need them, but um, they, they can each sleep two people. So it should cover the four of you, no problem. Of thank course. you, that's really kind of you. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you need? Um, I think we're all set up now, yeah? I believe so, yes. I cannot think of anything more to do, and I do believe the longer we are here, the more time we give our quarry to get forward with their plans. 
Right. Okay. Um, well, good luck. He's just gonna give her a big hug and a kiss on the cheek and say, I'll see you later, yeah? Later. And and send me a letter once you once you arrive um in 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 the capital. Just so I know you got there safe. Not to, you know, like be needy or anything. I just I just wanna I wanna know where to maybe send a letter if you're going somewhere next, if I if you wanna hear about the farm or anything going well, on in town. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send you a letter. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Be safe, everyone. Thank you. I guess off we go, yeah? Into the greater world. A world that has no idea who we are and that our intentions are good. I don't know how you do this, Yuisa. That's really not that hard. Many of the places that we may be going are... They, they are interesting, uh, but we should not have much to worry about in terms of what you seem to be worried about, if plus, I recall, unless times have changed. Plus, we're traveling together, so it'll be much better. Traveling alone yes. can be very boring. <laughs> we're, well, not a colony. A colony is stagnant. We, we're a swarm. We're a swarm going out forth into the world, and we're going to be together, and we're going to support each other. This court has taken... Whoever is closest to her, she's taking each of your hands like oh. her little nubs and is holding you. <laughs> Don't you worry. Uh, many of us are seasoned with traveling. Mm-hmm. We'll get there just fine. fine. And hopefully just fine. You will. Uh, you all head off down the road. It's a clear day. Uh, there's not much foot traffic near Dalhen, but as you near that joint in the road that branches off from the main thoroughfare, uh, you see that there's already plenty of travelers that are out on the road, some walking, some in carts, uh, some on horseback, uh, some on large beasts that look to be like, you're fairly certain that you see someone riding an owl bear up ahead in the distance. Uh, It's a rather unusual mount, but uh, not entirely unheard of if the tracker or if the uh, ranger is skilled enough in their animal handling. Uh, But there is uh, there is a general warm atmosphere as you hit the road. The sun is out uh, in full force. The temperature on this fall afternoon is comfortable, not too hot, not too cold. You can get by with just a sweater. And uh, you have uh, whichever way you wish to travel. If you travel north, you'll be heading towards the capital, towards the Pan Republic, or you can head south if you want to head uh, toward Ansteed or Watford, any of those cities. As we get to that fork, our just jaw tenses immediately, remembering like this is where we met uh, the people that we are now going to go hunt. <laughs> Uh, we're wanting to go north, right? To the Panel Republic? Uh, I believe that was our first... Our first idea of where to go, yes. Uh, seemed that there was more news going on from there. Plus, it's a uh, very large place, a very central place. If we are to find more information out, it would be a good place to start. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, I've not been that far, no, so I'm excited. So, I'm excited. And I've been underground that far north. I'll get oh, to see wow. the surface. The big, wide surface. Am, am I the only one here that's been to the capital? Yes. Yes. Oh, well, it sounds lovely. I'm sure that it will look just as lovely. You'll be, as they say, a tour guide for us. Ah, uh, hopefully things have not changed too much, but yes. When was the last time you were at the capital? I, I told you I lose track of time. As it were, uh, it's hard to track time when you don't have a ability to mark a calendar, as it were. But some, it's been quite some time. I wound up in uh, Ocran before I showed up here. Fun. Well, journey begins with a single step, shall we? Wait, 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 I'm we already moving. Moment. What? What are we? What? Miss Court like has her foot like raised up, like to do this whole like ceremonial thing. Then Yuisa just 
Like, she's also already by. like 10 steps ahead. It's like, oh, what? Are we supposed to be waiting? I, I, you know, you're right. Let's get going. No, 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 I, I, it's I, fine. I, what did you want to do? Too long is just going to take fist courts, like little nubbins, and then like. All right. He's just like trotting back. What happened? What are we doing? I figure in all the histories, all the good books that I've read, every hero begins with a step. And this place is where our grand journey to stop this evil begins. Let's take that step together as comrades. Can we count off so I know when to step? Yes. Are we doing left or right first? Uh, I'm not entirely certain. Uh, let's do right. Uh, uh, in, in, on, ooh, on go? On One, go. One, two, three, go. Okay. Okay, everybody holding hands. Are we doing this? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. One, two, three, go. <laughs> All right. As you all take your first step together, you get some some odd looks from passerbys who hear the uh, tail end of this conversation. Um, but you can definitely start your journey down the road. Uh, you make it a little ways following the flow of traffic, um, sticking to one side with those heading north. The others heading south are on the other side, uh, kind of this, in a similar fashion as to what we do today. Um as you travel, you make it about, we'll say about 45 minutes into your day. Can everyone roll me a perception check? Uh-oh, I don't like that. Because it's a sunny day, I'm rolling with disadvantage. <laughs> Those poor ahuling eyes. I actually rolled really well, that's a 14. 14. Dirty 20. 22 for too long. All of you who rolled above a 10 see this clearly coming down the road through the gaps in the traffic ahead of you. All right, you hear the sound of hooves traveling at a great speed coming towards you on the road. And it's time for y'all to make some wise decisions because there are over a dozen horses galloping at high speed along the road in a drag race. And they are leaving a huge dust cloud in their wake and heading right for you all. As you look further on, those who rolled above a 15, uh, you see that a straggler in this group has fallen from their horse. Their foot is tangled in their stirrup. This court is going to see this. All right, are you still holding my little nubbin? Yeah, sure. I don't know where to go otherwise. <laughs> I'm gra- You feel this court's back feet dig into your shoulders in a panic and flapping her wings as she starts oh. to try to raise you up into the air as these horses approach. So, oh god, what's going on? Horses! Uh, duck and roll! Duck and roll, children! Can I... So there's one person that is um, hanging from their stirrup and they're in the middle of this. Yeah, you see the you see the other people. The, the rest of the traffic is is quickly moving out of the way off to the side of the road. There's enough grass here that carts and everything are quickly moving towards the side. Would would I be able to it, it would be really hard to maneuver through horses to help this guy, huh? Uh, they are more towards the side of the group. OK. So there is potential to help if you wish. Okay, yeah, I would like to like move to the side to where they are and try to uh, help them. Um, if I cut them loose, do I think I would be able to pull them off or would they just drop? You'll have to find out what the dice decide. To be able to cut the strap as it's coming towards you, uh, give me a dexterity save. You can add your uh, proficiency bonus to it. Okay. A dex check, sorry. I think I rolled a 14. You did. Uh, okay, so it would be an 18 and a 21, sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh, Yuiza, your reflexes are quick as lightning. Uh, you are able to easily cut that strap that is holding uh, this gentleman's foot into his stirrup. Uh, what does it look like when you reach out to slice it? Um, I think Yuiza um, moves to the side of this kind of like herd of horses and as she see what's happening, it's like a quick throw of her bag on the ground and she kind of goes in and 
then I like to think for a second just kind of hangs onto the horse saddle and cuts it loose and kind of stops drop or like drops and roll with the guy. Okay, very nice. Uh, go ahead and make me a. Uh, you can do acrobatics or athletics to try and uh, cushion the fall that this person will take. Uh, I'm gonna do acrobatics because I have minus two athletics. Um, I would like to use an inspiration to re-roll that. Please do. What was your roll? <laughs> that was worse. Uh, a ten. My re-roll was a seven, so I'm gonna go with a ten. Yeah, not quite enough uh, to cushion this person's fall. Luckily, they are wearing some uh, armor, so they don't take too much damage as they hit the ground. Their horse continues to run uh, with the rest of the horses, uh, and they just sort of lay there in the dirt for a minute, breathing and blinking up at the sky. Yui's just kind of doing the same as they kind of rolled. I was like, are you okay? I, um, I think so. Thanks for the, I couldn't, I couldn't get to my, uh, dagger. Thanks for the, um, assist. And I, oh, uh, they sit up a little stiff after what they've been through and look over at you. Uh, thanks. Shit, I'm not going to get any prize money. I'm sorry. Uh, and you see a, uh, dark-skinned gentleman with a stubbly beard, uh, and short, uh, messy hair. Uh, their clothing is in shades of blue and they wear metal and leather armor. And I will show you their image. They slowly stand up and pat themselves down, checking uh, to make sure nothing is, is broken or uh, bruised. And, uh, well, uh, guess I should, guess I should go get Buttercup. She's not going to stop running till they reach the end point. He's just going to stand up. It's like, you you go do that. I yeah. Ha have better luck riding horses in the future. <laughs> I will if someone doesn't cut the reins on me. <laughs> Later. Uh, and uh, he starts checking. He starts uh, jogging down the road after the rest of the people uh, that were in that pack. That was a weird interaction. Once, like, the horses have passed from where we were standing, I just slow, slowly lower Arat to the ground before, like, you know, you know when you're holding on to someone, you're nervous, you're fit, your hands get sweaty. I think, like, about, like, a foot to the ground, I just slip from Arat, and I go, oh, what just, so, I'm ready, you're okay. Sorry, slippery claws. There were horses, I'm, I'm, lots of them. I, I know, but I do need healing. Do, do I need to cast a spell on you? Do we need to sit No. Me? No, I'm, 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 I'm fine. Uh, are, are, are the horses gone? Or are they too far? What happened? Those majestic beasts have run on forward, followed by a, a, a gentleman who was running about with them. Very strange customs, I must say. Oh, Yuisa, what were you doing, young lady, as I just swoop on over to where you s were slipping She's and sliding? She's just dusting herself off. She's like, what? I'm fine. You could have given yourself a concussion. I didn't. He looks like he was, you know, in danger. You could lose a foot like that, you know, and be dragged on the dirt road and just scrape off, you know, your face. Oh, absolutely. I suppose that's your rogue, but we're, we're far from the temple and Dolan, so we we should exercise caution, as they might say. Yeah, um, I'm fine though. I'm I'm, I'm just a little dirty, but it's uh, so dust it off, you know. God, I wish I knew prestidation because I could have been like clean, but I don't. I'm just cleric. <laughs> Wait, do I? Do I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What did I you did. take with your oh, shiny wait, new warlock you, pack? Wait, wait. So as Yuisa is like uh, dusting herself off, she's going. I think uh, unknowingly, she's gonna kind of go like this and just like her, the dirt on her is just boom. Yeah, like as Viscourt's like digging around her bag for the medieval equivalent of wet wipes and looks up and goes, "Oh, right, it's fine. Uh, oh, very well. I'm... Shall we go on then? Yes. But hopefully, no more horses." His horse's name was Buttercup. Cup made of butter? 
I think so. It's a it's a flower actually. It's a yellow flower. It looks like a little cup, and it's very yellow, like butter. I, need I to think I'm not really sure if that's why. <laughs> uh, everybody okay? Sulong, you okay? There is a Sulong shape outline where Sulong would have been, but during the entire thing, he had just stepped off the road and continued walking like a normal person. Well, bye. <laughs> He's waiting for you down the road, like just head turned. Uh, jogs back. Did I? Did I miss something? Horses, many of them. Yeah, I mean, dumb kids are gonna go around racing. Um, it's not uncommon. It sounded like somebody was stuck on one of the horses and being dragged, according to you, Isa. Ooh, yeah, that's not fun. Jumped. Yeah, I kind of jumped on the horse and kind of slash. No, <sighs> slash and free. This horse's name is Buttercup. That's a flower. Yeah, right. That's what I said. Do you I think they're called Buttercup? Bot <laughs> we'll get you a <gasps> we'll get you a book on body. And do you need to say this as she's picking up her um her backpack and starting to walk? It's like I think the capital is gonna have like a really big library. It does. Good, because I've heard many terrifying things. Apparently there's a snap dragon, but it's not a dragon. That's a also flower. a flower. Yeah. Another flower, That's yes. Terrifying. Have you heard of the Venus flytrap? It eats flies. Oh, you know what? Fiskorth, you're going to really like mushrooms. There's one called like the deadly nightshade or something like that. Well, that sounds rather poetic. And I know of mushrooms. We had many of them <gasps> back home. There's a, pl a flower called uh, Belladonna, where its fruits are poisonous. Uh, fun fact, Belladonna translates to beautiful woman. Well, that's all of you. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, are we going to start buttoning? Yes, well, oh, I, wait, I, have a, I have a few <laughs> books on, on plants that I can show you, actually. Don't read while you're walking, dear. You might trip over something. Considering her display yeah. of athleticism, I think she'll make it just fine. <laughs> She's going to take out a few books that she has, like journals that were for her studies uh, on like potions and poisons and stuff like that. It's like, look, so this one I pressed some flowers into because I went by them and I kind of described what they look like and what they smell like. Uh, so you can look at that if you want. Oh, Fiskworth admittedly ignores her own advice and sticks her nose right into the book as we all walk along. I'm watching like Wizard of Oz too. We're all just skipping <laughs> along. <laughs> I have my hand on her shoulder with my walking stick out front so that I can keep track of like bumps and digs in the road. My the way I've had to do it. He uses like in that one I found out this side and this one and that I did that one. <laughs> it's like it's, describing everything. For so long, it's the uh, kind of walk where you have taken your dog off the leash where they will walk ahead a couple of feet, circle back around, come back to the group, and then walk off again. Alrighty. Uh, as you all continue on down the road, you hear a lot of grumbles. Uh, you all hear as you pass by groups um, some grumbling about uh, drag racing, and uh, it's getting worse these days. Uh, a few of the older people grumbling about kids uh, causing trouble. Uh, there are a few mentions of groups that sound a little bit more sinister being involved in gambling, but uh, nothing that appears to be of immediate concern. As you all continue down the road a few more hours, it's getting close to little past noon. Now the sun is directly overhead almost, and uh, it's a bit warmer than it was when you started out. Uh, if you're wearing a, a warm layer, it's probably a good time to shrug it off for a couple hours. Uh, but if everyone could please roll me another round of perception checks as you travel down the road. Six. Okay. That one. Once again, I present a 22. What did Ara get? I got a 16. 16? Okay. Uh, Ara, you... And Sulong noticed this. Uh, you hear standing off 
uh, to the side, off to the side of the road, uh, there is the sound of someone tossing something repeatedly in the air, and a another the sound of a uh, squeeze box. Which, for those who don't know, a squeeze box is kind of like an accordion. Um, it has keys on the outside that you would press um, in order to play different notes, um, and it has a, a slightly higher pitch than an accordion. Are uh, uh, so long. Uh, with your 22, uh, you see off to the side three men in animal masks. Uh, two of them are juggling uh, pieces of f different fruit, and the one in the middle is playing a song on a squeeze box. Is there some sort of depository for this band of minstrels where I can plop down a coin? Uh, yes, there is a silk purple top hat with a red band that is uh, laid uh, out in front of them. There's a few coins in there already. He'll deposit a gold piece into it as they walk by. Okay. Uh, as you deposit your gold piece, uh, the man in the middle with a rabbit mask, he's uh, playing the squeeze box, uh, gives you just a silent nod, says nothing and the two beside him one wearing a bear mask and the other wearing the mask of uh you think it's a raven maybe it's some kind of dark winged bird but you know bird faces look pretty similar uh the other two don't respond mm. Mm -mm. nope nope that's a continue walking sort of situation <laughs> Having not seen any of that nor heard anything because it was just silence, like are actually just like dead stops and goes and hearing the sound goes, is that juggling? Yes, they're throwing fruits about, and I must say that does sound like the, someone I knew from home. What on you? Excuse me, there. As Suong is like trying to pull us along, Fiskorth immediately goes to investigate. What is this marvelous device you have that? Perfectly encapsulates keening. I, I am in a hooling if you did not know it through that strange thing on your face. You sound just like my mother, one of my mothers. As you say this, uh, the two men on the side and the man man playing the squeeze box, their heads kind of tilt, all at different angles. Not like not like in unison or anything creepy like that. Uh, and they start doing a little dance around one another to a sort of bum, 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 uh, song played on the squeeze box. And you get the sense, Fiskorth, that as they are doing this little dance, it's about a mother scolding children with their mannerisms. He was just kind of swaying to the music, like bum, 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 just literally singing out loud like that, bum, bum. Uh, bum, Su Long bum, will bum. lean over to Fiskorth. Oh, we over in Zara have a group kind of like this too. The whole no talking thing isn't like it's part of their thing, uh, but they do paint themselves blue. <laughs> God damn it, RJ! <laughs> oh, I wasn't looking. I was looking. <laughs> Fiskorth just gives you. I like, almost got boba up my nose. <laughs> That's a weird booger. <laughs> as much as a bat face can muster confusion, like this court just, I thought this was a religious ceremony. It's entertainment. Well, who's to say religion can't be entertaining? This court, as, as you say that, uh, the sound becomes more droning, more dull, and the performers begin marching in circles around your group. Oh, this looks, this feels threatening, everyone. Unable to see anything, I just lean over to Fiskorth and say, I, it's usually customary to give them some amount of money for their performance as an appreciation. Oh, a tithe, of course. And I fish around in my bag and pull out a piece of gold and throw it on the ground. I don't know that's supposed to go in the cap. It is just in the dirt. As you go to throw it, it never actually hits the dirt. The one in the raven mask sticks their boot out and the coin lands on the top of their brown leather boot and they kick their foot into the air ever so slightly to make it pop into the hat where they are collecting their money 
before returning with their friends. They start up a another song. It's a bit less stoic, a bit less church-like. Um, more of a jaunty travel tune. Hoolings cannot clap, but Fiskorth is chittering excitedly after seeing this trick. See, the best part of this calling service is that it doesn't cut out Abby's little creature sounds. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Are they still circling us, or did they just go back to no, the side of the road? No, they stopped. Okay. They're kind of uh, they're kind of imitating Fiskworth right now. They're doing like a wing flapping motion as they as they dance and play. Have you ever been to a zoo where the orangutan or gorilla starts like imitating the people on the other side of the glass? For their own entertainment, that's kind of what these performers are doing to Fiskorth now. She they're, is doing they're... it. She's being mocked. Mm -hmm. She's taking this as flattery. It's, it's not necessarily mocking. It's this is their entertainment, and you're getting your entertainment. So this is kind of like um, this is kind of like their version of healthy banter with an audience member since they don't speak. Oh my god, I love this so much. <laughs> Stu Long will lean over to one of the performers. So which one do I have to take across the river first before the other two, you know, don't eat each other? Usually it's a chicken, fox, and bag of rice, but... The one with the rabbit mask tilts their head ever so slightly and stops dancing. And they almost do a, like, like a straight-legged military march as they start walking away from you, and then they march right back to you. In reverse. That'll earn another gold coin and a chuckle from Su Long. But if nothing else is going on, Su Long will bid them adieu. I'm certain this is entertaining, uh, but yes. I mean, you can roll another perception check if you want. I was going to say, like, unless I can roll like perception or insight to get to glean what's happening that I can't see, then yeah. I got a dirty 20 on that. I'm not rolling perception. I've paid two gold pieces for this. I'm being entertained. I couldn't perceive. 18. Uh, as you uh, have all stood here, uh, you uh, gather a crowd. There's a lot more people you realize that have stopped to watch this performance. It appears that y'all stopping has attracted more attention. Realizing that, I'll actually mutter to the group. Of the, I think we've given them enough enough people to fund them for a bit. I'll put a hand on Fisk or shoulder. There will be many performers in the capital, I assure you. Are you saying the capital is all like that? You were so... There are more? There's many people that like to make money doing uh, you know, circus performances such like this, music performances. They'll dance with their instruments, sing, etc. Street magic. I'm just imagining he's saying this all to her, like, comfort. It's like when you go to the zoo, it's like, okay, honey, we'll go and see the other animals. But, like, Fiskworth just looking back sadly at the performers. Fiskworth is littering Arat with questions about the capital and what she should do, and also what things are to be found in the capital. Like, just things like, are there really houses with multiple floors? I've read about those in books. Are there also statues there that are carved from gold? Oh, oh, is there also, are the streets really covered in poop? I've heard this, that you, rather than having a dedicated place to use the bathroom, that, that surfacers will just throw it out into the streets. Uh, not in the capital. Some of the other places I've been, though, yes. Some of the more coastal towns, yes, but not not this one. Oh, that is relief. And then Fiskworth continues asking you lots of questions at the same time. The the more you ask, the more like you you see Ara like stop and think as if he's trying to like recall. Further, like more and more, but he's yeah. Just anything you ask, is like you'll give an answer to. But but there's there's a lot of like, was it like that? The whole way through. Uh, you all can definitely chat about that and set the little expectations that Fiskworth has. Uh, but as it approaches your first night, uh, you're still a good ways away from any sort of tavern. Um, you do pass a few carts here and there uh, from farmers uh, who can easily make it to the road to sell to travelers. You see a few people selling 
uh, small wheels of cheese. Uh, there are fruit cellars that will set up by the stand, vegetable cellars. Um, you see a lot of people selling dried goods as well uh, that could easily be cooked on the road or transported a short distance to be cooked. Um, you're welcome to stop and pick up any food supplies you may need, aside from what Ivy has packed you all. Sulong picks up a bag of rice. He hasn't had rice in so long. Yeah, yeah. You are. You do definitely find uh, someone selling rice. Um, they're so they're not. They're selling a. Um, they're selling a medium grain rice. It, it's not a, a very refined rice, but it is it's still pretty good. Is uh, you rice. can still cook it, it up works. and add it to things. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned um, buying food, and it just occurred to me that I could have fed on the crowd that we gathered watching the performance, and I didn't. <laughs> Oops. You uh, could be feeding on Fist Court this whole time. I'll, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Like, the more that questions go on, like, he's like, like nodding and answering girls. Just... Like, I've heard about cities that each of them has a dragon that lives underneath. Oh, could you imagine that? And he's just like, keep going, babe. Keep going. Is there anything with fruit? Yeah, there's fruit sellers all along the way. She's going to uh, grab a couple oranges. You can both go ahead and subtract like a, a couple silver mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from your from your uh, inventory to cover the cost of food. Uh, it's not too expensive, like maybe like two or three. Um, but yeah, as day becomes night, you will need to find a place to sleep. However, who would like to be in charge of finding a place to sleep? RJ? <clears throat> I have a feature called Outlander as part of my background. <laughs> yeah. What does this feature do? You have an excellent memory for maps and geography, and you can always recall the general layout of terrain, settlements, and other features around you. In addition, you can find food and fresh water for yourself and up to five people each day, provided that the land offers berries, small games, water, and so forth. I guess I still need to make a nature survival check to find a decent place to sleep. Yes, I would like a survival check still. Will do. Does it allow you to make it at advantage, or does it just say that you can find something? Uh, I have another perk, which gives me survival at advantage anyway, so I will Fantastic. hit that. Well, that's happening. I just want you to know that Yuis is trying to open an orange while you're walking, and it's the whole, like, I'm not paying attention, I'm just following you <laughs> type of situation. At some point, Sulong just full stops in front of Yuisa, and it's just face into shield <laughs> as he finds, like, a decent place. Uh, sorry, I... Uh, Can I get an animal handling check from you, Yuisa, to see if Stinky Boy is startled by this encounter? <laughs> the mandated stinky check. Uh, what what role did you want? Animal handling. Animal handling. Oh, okay. Nine. <laughs> uh, let me pull up Stinky Boy. Uh, I am going to need you to roll that uh, constitution saving throw. Both you and Sue Long uh, are at Fiskorth. If you followed them, I'll need you to roll it as well as Stinky Boy is startled. The DC <laughs> for Stinky Boy being startled is 10. Oh, okay. 12. <laughs> okay. Good to go. Uh, I got a Sulong, 15. look what you did. What did you get, Sulong? 15. 15, okay. 17. Oh. 17? What did Arat get? 12. 12, okay. Uh, For the uh, poison save, it is uh, DC 11, so you all pass. Uh, And you all should be able to see that on his sheet as well. Uh, Yeah, you are able to find a spot, Sulong. Um, There's a nice little clearing uh, under some trees that, should it start to rain, uh, will provide a little cover. There's a uh, a slightly dug out indent in the earth with some rocks around it. You kind of get the feeling that someone might have set up a fire pit here previously, but uh, there doesn't appear to have been recently used. Okay. So long will just throw up uh, one of the tent tarps to just make a little lean to using the tree, essentially. This court is up in the trees nearest by shaking them for predators because she herself is an ambush predator and that's the place she would do an ambush so she is checking out security roll me a survival check Fiskorth. oh boy oh my survival's actually pretty good uh oh that's an 8 is it pretty good because you just took a couple squirrels to the face as he shook a nest free uh, and they are not happy 
with you. Uh, so you all um, hear some squeaking and chittering, both from your friend and from a sm couple small rodents um, up above you as two squirrels plop to the ground uh, and run away. Uh, Yuisa, what are you up to? As Sulong is setting up, uh, Yuisa is going to try and set up the tents. I don't know if she actually knows how to do that. <laughs> Uh, they're a very easy design. It's essentially just two poles that go on the ground, a rope that goes across them, and then you stake the corners. It, it's literally the most basic tent you can possibly have. Um, go ahead and roll me. Let's let's see. There isn't crafting rolls in this, so let's call it a. I think that would require a little bit of dexterity. So you can. I'll say you can roll either dexterity or strength, uh, whichever one you want to roll. Dexterity. I have plus four, and strength is minus two. So. 16. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you get those two tents up. No problem. Uh, it's it's a, It was a little intimidating just because you didn't know how to do it. But once you laid everything out and took a look at it, you, you got this. There's just a full five minutes that's her staring at the components of the tent on the ground. And then she just starts like uh, putting them together. No problem. Like the five minutes she's trying to figure out in her head how everything's going to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You used to have to build it in her head first before yeah. actually starting it. Same girl. <laughs> uh, what's Arat doing? Uh, Arat is doing two things. First, because he knows he's about to fall asleep and it's going to reset. I'm pulling from my uh, my chosen deck, the Wild Oracle card, so that for this next hour as we're setting up, I can just sense the auras of any creatures that are around me so I can get a sense of if there's anything particularly hostile in, like, in our immediate vicinity. It won't help during the night, but making sure there's nothing like immediately around us that's going to be a problem. I imagine I'm getting a little bit of a little bit of heat off of the squirrels at the moment, but beyond that it's up to you. Uh, uh th yeah. Hmm. Not at the moment, no. Okay, yeah, this this will go for the next hour. Like I said, once I'm asleep, obviously not going to help, but for now, uh the second thing he's going to do is the is the thing that he did when he had to travel by himself. Uh which is He's going to walk around. He's going to do like a like a, a slow circle around the uh, the campsite. Uh, and then wrapped up in his new scarf that he took is just some empty bottles uh, from the wands want. And as he walks, he just he crushes them and just starts sprinkling them around so that if something comes, what comes in, he can hear it at least. OK, are you doing just, this in a circle around as the much as as much of a circle as he can without, you know, direct guidance of a circle. But yeah. Yeah, sure. He's trying to make um, a perimeter so th of alarm without it being an alarm spell. Yeah, spreading glass in the forest never went wrong for anybody. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll say that you could at least get it uh, between you and the road. Okay, that'll be, honestly, mm -hmm. that'll be pretty helpful anyway. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that Sulong's doing to help set up camp? Uh, eventually he will go off into the woods, come back with like a couple quail. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'd say you can definitely do that. Don't ask how he got them. The definitely Marines. wasn't with Fiskorth's help. Fiskorth is in her war of her own right now. Foul pretender! I have like some flying squirrel that's like just casually eating a nut. You call yourself a master of flight. Fiskorth, can you help me skin these, please? Oh, uh, I, we will return to this debate, foul beast. And then going to hell with Sulong. Yeah. All right. Is there any uh, conversation y'all want to have around the fire while you're setting things up or anything? I think you just go and straight into watch quail, Fiskorth is going to ask if she can drain it. Like, she just looks at Sulong, big old puppy eyes, as much as a vampire bat can manage, and just... Oh, I was going to pour them out in the cup for you so you can have it all at once, but sure. It's much more fun when you do it yourself. And just proceed vicious mauling of this quail corpse. <laughs> Not even skipping a beat. Eh, well, you know, acts of service and all that stuff. You're very mouthful of quail. You're very sweet, too long. You've got a little, uh, <laughs> just wipes the corner of her mouth with a thumb and then flicks it away. Yep. Mm-hmm. So how are we splitting up the tents? Guys and girls. Whatever is comfortable. 
not going to see anything that I shouldn't be seeing, so I'm fine either way. Uh, no offense, Yurisa, but I would prefer to bed down with Arad if that's quite all right. I mean, honestly, I was just asking in case you like you didn't want like anyone to actually know, but I was like, you know, I don't know what's going on between Fiskorth and Ada, but they seem like they were, you know, getting a tent together, so. Arat just nods. Arat nods, but in his head, it's solely be like, oh, yeah, no, we, we bunked together at the Wands Want. This totally makes sense. And that's. Fiskorth, <laughs> I'm laying down in my marriage bed. <laughs> she is pink and giggly as she asks this. Uh, well, I'm gonna move one tent a little away, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a cross campsite, you know, have a one tent over there, one tent over there sort of situation. Yeah, yeah, so we're not all in the same area. Uh, well, right, well, if you're going to do that, I, I put some broken glass between us and the road in case anybody comes this way. Uh, oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. If, that's yeah, perfect. If you're not going to be nearby. Yeah. Uh, uh huh. Okay, uh, I won't put I won't put it too close to the to the glass. I uh, well to the road. I promise. You know, my mother laid upon this knowledge to me. It's very fun to make things out of clay, but it's not fun to play with broken glass. I think that's a very practical statement. It is. I agree. She was a very practical woman, guardian of our cavern. Did you play with broken glass a lot? <laughs> Fiskor turns away and suddenly becomes very interested in the ground. Like, did you let? You, you know what? Um, this fine. Sorry. Do you need help with cooking, Sulong? It'd be appreciated. Yeah. She'll start like pl plucking the pheasants. I, I'm I'm happy to help as well. Should you need any assistance? Uh. <sighs> No, just take some time to relax, I guess. I think we've got most of this covered. Um, Certainly. I mean, you could take over chopping in a couple of minutes. I have to go use the bathroom. Certainly. That's perfectly fine. Uh, are you all taking watches or are you all just going to sleep? Watches, of course. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't know. You, it's a valid question because I put down glass to be like, OK, I'm good. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, well, that's a good question. All right, it's I ready can to go take night the night. first watch. I'll take second after you. I have the superior eyesight in the darkness, after all. That is true. I'm fine with either third or fourth. Uh, Arat, do you have a preference? Uh, if we're doing four, then I suppose I will do the fourth one. I tend to go down pretty hard, uh, so... The Though, first and the last are the best ones to take, really. Very well. Uh, yes, so if we're doing four of them, then certainly I can do the, the final watch. Or, so to speak. You all are able to have your dinner together, some nice quiet conversation, maybe a few stories to scare Fiskworth before bed. And uh, then you uh, all set up for your watches. You, you are first up. Do you do anything special for your watch? I think she is sitting by the campfire while there's still some sunlight, kind of like it's the sun's coming down. Uh, she takes out a notebook and this notebook, uh, I had described it in the very first episode. And it had drawings of places and pictures of people with their names underneath. And she turns as she's turning the pages, you see different drawings. Some have watercolor, some have pastels, some are just sketches of, of charcoal. Uh, but she goes to a new page and starts kind of sketching out the view of like the two tents with the fire in the middle and the road in the background. Um, and just sketching the scenery while she is um, taking her watch. Okay. Uh, roll me perception. <laughs> I have plus zero in that. I would like to use an inspiration to re-roll. What'd you roll? I rolled a two. I rolled a 17. Fantastic. I have one inspiration left. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, as you... go through your bag to get out your art supplies, you notice that 
about 20 gold is missing from your bag. <gasps> Those stupid men with the mask. You also hear some rustling out in the forest. She's going to put her book back in her bag and she's going to stand up and look towards the forest. Okay. Does she see any move other movement? You see something possibly moving between the trees in the distance. It's difficult with the way the light tricks your eyes as the flames lick upwards from the campfire. Go ahead and roll me investigation. I am slightly better at that. Ten. <laughs> ten. That was the most painful ten I've ever said in my life. <laughs> Must just be a trick of the light. And where's Precious Stinky Boy? He's asleep next to the fire. Okay. She's gonna sit down and grumble about missing her 20 gold. And stupid juggler and mass men and like not accordion accordion. The rest of your watch goes by fine. Nothing jumps out from the bushes <laughs> to attack you. Yet. Fiskorth okay. can be woken up if you wish. Fiskorth. Fiskorth is actually laying down, by the way. I think she and I were at whole discussion like, no, you can't hang on the tent. It's going to come down if you hang on it with your feet. You have to lay on the ground. So she's like all like just an interesting pose. Like, oh, yes, it's it's your turn for the watch. Oh, yes, give me a moment. And you just very is cracking of bones as she like gets herself up from the ground. I don't know how you do this on the regular. It hurts my back to sleep like this. Well, if we would hang upside down to sleep, all the blood would go to our heads and we would die. That's never happened to me and I've been alive for... We are very different anatomically. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Sleep well, my dear. I shall keep many eyes and ears out. Um, I thought I saw something rustling in the forest earlier, but I... Well, maybe it was nothing, but just just to let you know, you know? I'm it could have been like a squirrel, or like a raccoon, or like a bunny, or like a, you know, I don't know. I just heard, you just see Fiskort's eyes turn towards Stinky Boy. <laughs> and then back to you. Leave him alone, he's just sleeping. He didn't do anything. I will keep my eyes, especially on that wretched beast, Yuisa. And then she'll just... Go to her walk. <laughs> Whatever. Good night. <laughs> All right, Fiskorth. Do you do anything special during your watch? Are you used to keeping watch? She is, actually. Sometimes uh, guests to the Chapel of Cacophony would make certain moves, you know, before we really refined the whole system of keeping them there. So Fiskorth is hanging upside down in, like, the densest part of whatever tree is there. Her head turned down fully so she can see whoever's entering the camp. Okay. Fantastic. Go ahead and roll me perception. Oh boy, let's go. 14. Today is the day of 14s. Jeez. 14. Okay. You take a moment at one point to look through your things, maybe to get yourself a little snack of some sort or find something juicy and romantic to read. A little boring, just sitting there by yourself. You've also noticed that about 20 gold is missing from your pack. How? I must have misplaced it somewhere. I'll just go out in the morning and just put her pack away and then look up the lover's guide for her as she opens it and reads the... And what do we do after we lay down at the same bed with each other? Because it seems very different than what we do upside down. And then as you ask yourself this question, you also notice a rustling. Just out of sight. In the forest. Oh, creepy owl, like head turning around 180 degrees to the sound. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's across the camp from where you have your perch. You can roll investigation if you want to try and get a better look. Oh, I most certainly will. That was not a great roll. That was an eight. I'm going to try again and use my inspiration. Okay, Bye -bye go inspiration. ahead and use that reroll. 
Come on, reroll. That was a nat one, and that was a zero. <laughs> Might be another squirrel. I hate those squirrels so much, but <sighs> I better keep an eye out. Even better then, because those horrible beasts might attempt to raid on our camp, and I cannot let any of my companions fall to harm. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, the rest of your watch goes by just fine. Fiskort doesn't wake up so long in the way that, like, you usually do, like, a gentle shake. So long, do you know that feeling when you're being stared at? Yeah. Fiskort is at the edge of your tent through the opening. I can know her eyes glow in the dark, so just a pair of red glowing eyes. And she says, so long, it is time for your watch. Sulong's at, like, the tail end of Rem's sleep coming back up. <laughs> Sleeping on his belly, he, like, opens an eye, looks up at Fiskorth. All right. <clears throat> Would you like something to eat, a snack? Uh, I'll just get some water from my water skin, I guess. Fiskorth reaches into her bosom and produces a water skin. It's warm, and she hands it to you. Thank you. I forgot to drink it while I was on my watch. You'll make better use of it than I. She then swoops into the night. Uh, Sulong will begrudgingly get up, um, pull a stump and upright it, sit down on the fi- uh, next to the fire and just like, look at the water skin he was given. Put it, puts it to the side for a while just to let the air chill it out a little bit. Okay, yeah. Uh, it brings it up to like a, a comfortable room temperature water, uh, no longer body temp, um, but it's not it's not too cold yet this time of year. Uh, Stinky boy is still asleep next to the lower fire, uh, enjoying the warmth. It seems his little heads resting on on a log that y'all were using to sit. Uh, what do you do for your for your watch? You'll find a piece of wood. Take out his uh, walk, walk knife and start carving into it. Go ahead and uh, roll me a dex check. Let's see how far you get. Uh, 20. What do you make? It's it's starting to form into a more serpentine shape, but it doesn't really look like much at the moment. He's taking his time with this. All right. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Go ahead and roll me a perception check for your watch. 24? 24. When you went to reach for your walk-walk knife and um, went through your pack to find some other supplies, you also noticed that about 20 gold was missing from your pack. Go ahead and remove that. And you also see wrestling just beyond the light of the fire and a little head pop up with two yellow eyes from a bush. What kind of head? Do you go to look? Sure. Uh, As you get closer, the head pops back down into the bush and then peeks out from the side of the tree right next to it and slowly approaches you as well. And you see a little goblin. He looks lean and thin, and he's speaking in a language that I don't believe you speak. Do you speak goblin? No. Uh, Sulong will tilt his head quizzically um, and shake his head like he can't understand, but will point to the fire We'll point to the pack that's next to the fire that's his, and then mime eating. The goblin reaches into his trouser pocket and pulls out about four copper coins and mimes the same movement to you and nods his head. Uh, Sulong will just reach down and curl the goblin's fingers over the copper coins and shake his head and lead them over to the fire. Okay. He comes with you. The little goblin eats hungrily what you give him. Uh, Gives a side eye to precious stinky boy. Not quite sure what a deer is doing 
in the middle of your camp. That's something that you hunt for food. Can I appraise them? Like, give them a medical check of some sort? Like, they are certainly malnourished, but what else is wrong with them? You can roll medicine. A 12. Um, they seem to be thin. Probably a little light on eating recently, but otherwise in good health. There doesn't appear to be anything outwardly wrong with them. They're just a little goblin. Goblin on some quail. Out of Sulong's pack, he'll grab like some jerky, some dried fruit, put them into a little handkerchief and tie them up onto a stick and hand them to the goblin after they're finished eating like a little hobo rucksack. I love it. Is it red with polka dots? Sure. <laughs> Uh, they'll tilt their head and look at you a little confused, but take it from you. With a little wave, uh, but the rest of your watch goes by without incident. <sighs> he will head over and wake it up. We'll pull the tent flap back and like kick the bottom of Arat's like boot lightly to wake them up. He doesn't feel like crawling in there over Fiskorth to shake you awake. <laughs> cool. Um, like, as soon as the kick happens, it's really fast, but Arat is suddenly, like, flipped head to head towards you and is just very much in a, like, def like a feral defensive pose. <laughs> All right, calm down there, before he, like Before he actually smells you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, that was sudden. Are you okay? Uh, four hours before dawn, it is your turn for a shift. Yes, no, sorry. And he, he puts on his eye covering. Uh, you got a nice look at just the smooth, no sockets. And uh, yeah, just grab my stick and go out into the center. Is anything of note? Uh, there was a little goblinoid that was kind of hungry. I fed them, sent them on their way. Oh. You didn't name him, did you? No, I didn't. That's how they get you. Good choice. Hey. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, You've been around for a while, right? I'd say so. Can I talk to you about something a little private? Of course. How can I help? So he will sit down by the fire next to Arat. Back in the mansion, there was a moment where someone had gotten possessed by something, and uh, I'd taken it upon myself to dispatch them. It was this kind of situation was either us or them, but in the end they transformed back, and I was wondering if there were ways that you deal with having dispatched someone? It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, clearly we have had to do this in our own defense, but it is, diff it is different in situations such as this when you are not intending it. I... On the occasion that this happens, I find that it is important to take account of the circumstance and understand that this was not done out of intent and malice or hate or harm. This was unfortunate. You clearly feel guilt about this, and thus it is... Well, it is reflective of the situation. If you were worried about such a thing. I mean, yeah, I I just keep thinking, I is there something I could have done different to avoid it, you know? Well, possibly you could have restrained them and hoped that there was a way to reverse whatever happened, but you did not know this. I assume that you did not put them in such a situation and then decide to kill them for simplicity's sake. This 
Arad can't see it, but there is a look of horror on Su Long's face because he had never thought about that as an option. Like, what the hell? It's like, but at the same time, like in in the in the moment, you are trying to protect yourself. And maybe those who are nearby to you, who do what you must. It is very unfortunate, not the way that any of us want things to go. Sometimes terrible things happen. Have I ever told you about Zarin anatomy? I believe I overheard you mentioning it at some point. I gleaned a bit of it, but I'm, no, not in any particular detail. Well, gesturing to his arms and then remembering Arat can't see. When I got my extra set of arms, it was during a very stressful situation. Um, some people theorize that these gifts, as they manifest, uh, come out in those urgent times because it's something we want. Um, I need more hands for to help more. And so I guess that's what, how this happened. Adaptation out of necessity. Yeah. I'm just afraid that if this adaptation happens while I'm not right, what kind of monster that's going to form? What was the necessity that you felt when this change occurred? I wanted to help. So the thing that sparked a significant change in your very physiology, one that is documented by your people, that stems from the most strong feeling that you could possibly have, is one of helping people, not hurting people. I'm just worried there might be a point in time where that won't be the case. Well, between now and then, you will simply have to keep track of yourself and continue helping people. Keep that your strongest desire. <sighs> the only thing that separates us from these untamed urges is want. And the rules we set out for ourselves. Not even. Rules are meant to be broken. Rules break when you don't intend for them. But what you want to do, what you intend to do, it does in fact matter, even though some may not agree with it. It still does matter. There is a shift in weight as Sulong rises from his seated position and claps it out on the back. Maybe I'll sleep on it. Do you have to sleep on you on your stomach now? Is the back, the arms difficult to sleep on your back? Or? I can kind of sleep on my side and use the extra arms as a pillow, which is really cool. But like normally sleeping on the tummy works. OK, I, I, I did wonder. See you in the morning. All right. All right. What do you do for your watch? Well, with the not with the knowledge slash intent that I plan on just sitting here, aka like sort of the equivalent of a short rest, because I'm not going to be doing much except for sitting and taking my surroundings. I'm going to immediately burn the same wild oracle card to help with my watch to feel, you know, change in hostility around me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he just he just sits there and with the remaining deck. It's it's very light, but just he sits there and just very like idly like flip a card in the air and catch it in a the laziest juggling fashion. <laughs> OK, entertain himself uh, while he while he just listens. As you do this, uh, roll me perception. Also 24. 
Uh, as you go through your things uh, and get your cards, maybe maybe check out a few items during your watch, make sure everything's in order for the next day, you also notice 20 gold is missing from your pack. Stop, consider it, and then just go. Go figure. And then continue with what I was doing. Yeah. Respect the uh, hustle. The rest of your watch goes by uneventfully. At one point, you hear the sound of a creature stretching nearby and the sound of tiny hooved feet on the ground as they approach. Just reach out the back of my hand. You reach it out and you feel precious stinky boy's cold nose boop up against it. They might be a little cold considering the fire is probably mostly gone out by now. I'm going to dig into my bag and pull out this will tell you our priorities. Pull out that very nice robe that was made for, for him and drape that over the, over the stink deer. It's like, ah, oh, you're, you're cold, of course. Yeah. Uh, precious stinky boy uh, gets a little stiff for a moment, but then uh, figuring out you don't mean him any harm uh, is going to settle down right next to you. Uh, and you feel his head next to your leg as he goes back to sleep under his, his new cloak. But the rest of your watch is uneventful. You're an odd one. Right? Then he'll just sit there, again, just listening, taking in the sounds of everything until he can feel the expended car just appear back in the deck after the hour of time in the four-hour shift. You do that, and the rest of you, after the four hours, can wake up at your leisure or wait for Arat to wake you up. But you all have survived your first night camping together. Congratulations, everybody. And I think that is a perfect spot for us to go ahead and take our break and resolve our caption issues. Uh, we will be back in about 10 minutes, everyone. So don't go nowhere unless it's to grab a drink, grab a friend, or go to the Tiltify link that's been popping up in chat and make a donation to Doctors Without Borders. For any free minimum $5 donation, you can gift these players some DM inspiration and they've come in handy. They've, they've done some cool stuff tonight. So we will see you all in a little bit. Everybody wave. Bye. Let's slide back into the game. You're all waking up and joining Arat for breakfast. How does everyone wake up when you're out on the road? Sore, very sore. It's my first time sleeping. What's the word? Horizontal. I don't like it. My bones, they're hollow. They're delicate. What do you mean I'm supposed to sleep on my back? I ended up like face down on the ground, just laying straight like in a coffin and just... <laughs> Yuisa gets up to see that Sulong has just buried his face inside his like a wrapped up um, sleeping bag. <laughs> He's sleeping on his belly and it's just like... Give me five more minutes. I had third shift. He's just, just curled up in like fetal position. Like closer to Sulong, kind of like looking for warmth. But she's just like right there. It's like, it's okay. I'm five. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Outside, Arat has restarted the fire. Uh, just like felt around for any leftover of any, le any leftover meat and just taken like his pot out of his uh out of his supplies and he's put it in there just to like slow reheat food for the for everybody else that needs to you know eat in the morning and just just sitting next to it he didn't go find anything or make anything just that Yuisa like sits up but it's like that half blurred like bed half bed head sit up it's like okay and it just starts like hitting too long on like the arm it's time to wake up. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. I'll see you outside. We have walking. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna get coffee. And she kind of walks out with like a little blanket and just sits near in the fire. And that's that little like kind of cartoon like yawn. Sir Coffee. Uh, I did not have the supplies for it, but if you if you do, I can make it. I did reheat food, though. You're so sweet. That's so nice. And she's going to stand up 
and go back to her bag and bring it with her as she's huddled up. Yuisa, as you uh, come back with your bag, you notice that uh, Precious Stinky Boy is sleeping under Arat's very nice uh, robe. Oh my god, Arat, you're so sweet. It's, it's just uh, meat. No, you, Precious Stinky Boy's got your little coke on. And she's putting water from her water skin in the little like pot. Yes, he was he was cold and he'll take the he'll take the pot once he hears water hitting it and just starts making coffee. The the way that Arat makes coffee is uh it's it's very strong because it's set like in the fields. He strains and everything, it's proper coffee, but it's it tastes more like you're drinking like hard espresso than anything else. She takes a sip of it, she's like This is wow, this is real strong, I like it. It's like I'm just gonna Yep. Just gonna sit here and the sun. Yeah, but she's yes. just gonna sit with her little espresso cup. Oh, by the way, so long says as he's getting out of the tent. <sighs> there was um, there was a goblin last night. It looked a what? pretty. A, a goblin. I'm waiting for confirmation that you understood me saying a goblin. Yeah. Why? I don't know. They were just lurking outside the perimeter of camp. Um, looked really hungry. Okay. I fed them and sent them. Also, oh, those guys took my money. I should have realized that they would do that. I'm very upset right now. My well, money can be replaced. Just like fist court slowly emerges. I am surprised I did not feel it, but it should have occurred to me that it was. A possibility. I knew that them circling us was threatening. I didn't say anything. I'm so sorry I failed you guys. No, 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 my dear. You didn't fail at all. If anything, it was probably those squirrels. Pesky creatures of the night. I don't think a squirrel... <gasps> what if it was the bag man? Fisk, all her fur just stands up on edge. Oh, wait, no. I'm the only one with a bag of holding. It's fine. Keep an eye on it, especially on our journey. And Fist just kind of leans into our rap for her just for a moment. Then her eyes go wide. I, I need to excuse myself just a moment. I'm going to make myself tea. Give me. I as she just waddles off into the forest. Can make the. She says she's going to make the tea. No tea, Yuisa. Tea. I don't know. Coffee. Where's coffee? It's what? All right, it's great. Yes. Uh, pull off a pastry that Ivy gave me and eat it with my coffee. This Corth will return with like a very earthy, very herbal-looking mixture. Kind of looks like dirt, but she will take a she'll take a biscuit if there's one available. Yeah, she'll pass out some pastries. She's very flustered and just, <laughs> just po- point at the point at the uh, the pot of. I- I reheated the meat from last night. Oh, thank God. Oh, you are so kind, truly. And to you, I just a little quietly, almost conspiratorially. I don't want to be in a family way after all. Just a few herbs. Okay. Hey, Fizz, are you interested in the weather? What do you... I, it's perfectly fine. Is it going to rain, do you think? Well, no, back on Zara, there is a tale that is told about a certain uh, meteorological, meteor weather phenomena where uh, a giant gale came down into the ocean and picked up a bunch of sharks and began tearing through the countryside. I thought that was a wizard that did that. No, no, it wasn't even magical. It was just a freak nature thing. Hmm. Sudong, I say this with great love and affection for you, but I wish to never visit your homeland if this is a regular occurrence. No, no, no. It was like a while ago. I don't think I was alive for it. That sounds weird. Petrifying. Well, uh, for what this worth, uh, there are there are many, many mountains between uh, what I believe Zara is and where we are going, so we will be very safe from carnivorous weather. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing 20 gold. I believe we all are, yes. I figured you just borrowed it since we share everything. You're saying something stolen? Squirrels, perhaps? 
I think it was the guys by the uh, yeah by the, road. the perfor- no. performers. Some sometimes performers will make do do their their craft, and then when people are not looking, they will take more. Well, as they say, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism, but I would prefer if they'd asked. I don't believe they spoke much. Uh, Sulong is taking down the tents and rolling up bed rolls and just doing packing. Yuiza, as everyone mentions that they all lost the exact same amount of money. Roll me a history check. Fifteen. Fifteen. You remember once your aunt took you to meet a distant uncle with heavy air quotes. Uh, He, much like the other members of your family, didn't exactly trade fairly with customers that he encountered. He had a box. And as a bard, he would often find himself performing on street corners. However, to make a little extra money, he would bring out this box. People would walk by tossing their coins in. But what they always failed to notice is that the ones who stuck around, the box would magically remove a certain amount of money from all of the coin purses within a certain vicinity when a certain sound was played. Oh, I should have known that was the trick that they were doing. And that's all she says. So she, she was like resting on Sulong's, like one of his shoulders, like, oh, that was a good trick. Go on. Is there a magician in the woods with us? Go on. Dear. There is a box. Okay, so I learned this when I was young, right? I had an uncle, right? Uh, I only saw him like once or twice every few years, but it was really cool. He had this box, right? That he, because he was a bard, and when he would perform, um, the box at a certain amount, whenever he played a certain amount of certain noise, sorry, uh, it would remove a certain amount of money from people in the vicinity. That's what they were all missing 20 coins, right? Yes. Yes. So they. They had a box, and they must have been using the squeeze box to activate it. That's Interesting. smart. That, the droning noise must have covered up the sound of the coin. That's why I didn't hear anything. Possibly. Yuiza, you would know that uh, this sort of device, although rare, uh, has a name. It's called Phelan's Fortune. It's named after the thief who originally invented it. They were a wizard, a they were a wizard warlock combo. Uh, it's been around for a while, but they're quite rare to see. I'm surprised anybody else has that. I've only ever seen it once before in my life. Wait, why don't they just do that next to a bank? They might. I mean, it could have uh, restrictions about, you know, walls and all that stuff. But I'm just saying they got their hands on something pretty rare. Exactly. And if in the wrong hands, what if it were to pull something else out of a bag, like the bag man? And she says this in a whisper, terrified as if he's going to pop out if she says it. As this conversation is going, Sulong is just like blankly looking up into the air and then just barks out a laugh, turning to Yuiza. Could you just imagine some dude standing in an alleyway next to a bank playing their horn over and over again? <laughs> trying to get all I the people like, out of the <laughs> I feel like that might be a little suspicious, but the way they do it was perfect. Okay, I'm still angry. But there's a little bit People of respect. They do rather well. Yes. They do rather well in the city. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to add to the lore for you, but uh, you, Isa, uh, you would also know that uh, banks and treasuries tend to be fairly well guarded, uh, and you have to get fairly close to one of these devices in order to pull money from it. Also, places that store money tend to be very well warded against this type of type of magic. That uncle that. 
you used to knew. Uh, he didn't perform anything like these people did. It was like something different, right? Uh, no, he used a loot. Okay. Yeah. Is there any other conversation as you all get ready? Does anyone here know how to speak? What languages do we know how to speak? Just getting that out there. I know Elvish. Uh, cause I'm an elf. And she like just kind of flip, flick her ears. In, in in Elvish, Ara Ara goes. No, you're not. <laughs> well, this is the only form I know, like per- more permanently. I don't know. Listen, I don't know what else to go by. I know deep speech. I don't know why, but I know it. As do I. Dwarves are fairly common around these oh, parts. Oh, see, there. that's really cool. I don't know why I know it. Um, and sometimes I'm good at ciphers, riddles, and uh, things can't. Because I... You're brilliant at that, my dear. I definitely don't use it. That's nice to know. I will take that at face value. (laughs) Fiskorth, you speak uh, deep speech as well? Yes, I do. I also speak, and she rattles off various demonic sounds, which, if anyone knows, it's abyssal... uh, let me make sure. Abyssal, Infernal, and of course, Hulang. So it, it, it's anyone who does that. It sounds like screeching, just in various tones. It's terrifying. Art responds in Abyssal. He goes, I know that one. And then he responds in Infernal. I know that one. And then when you do the screeching, he just immediately hands to ears. Ah. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. She just pats your shoulder. It's perfectly fine. Uh, just- sorry. Uh, this one, common, uh, the language of dragons and some elvish. Yes, I, I, I speak common. I speak Elvish. He points towards Yuiza. I speak Abyssal and Infernal. Points towards uh, Fiskworth. And uh, and then also uh, this, I learned this one language uh, from when all of this uh, happened. He's just, he just starts speaking under common, which is just very like back of the throat guttural. <laughs> I don't know what that's called, but it was the, the ones who raised me up uh, spoke it. Hmm, curious. I like as from a child or from you know no no that's no 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 it's no not from a child uh, my current state. I'm going to say if, if it was drow by any chance it's a miracle you made it out alive. <laughs> Ruthless to say there's a reason why my people and I don't get along with them too well. Oh no, uh, I, may, I I do not recall if a drow ever came through uh, the caves there, but no, uh, it was the. Uh, the, the, the true vampires. Uh, that. Oh. oh! Even more terrifying. And I'm saying yes. this as a vampire myself. Well, not a, no, a no, vampire vampire, but vampiric. No, they did, they did quite well by me, all things considered. Learning a lot about a lot of people today. Well, how did you think I became like this? Oh, no, about Fiskorth being a vampire. Oh, I, I mean... Oh, she's a vampire <laughs> Arad, I accept you as who you are. I should hope so. We should get going. Yes, before it gets too bright, it makes my skin itchy. We should get you sunglasses and like a better cape. And maybe like a sun hat. Are they do parasols, I think. What is a parasol? It is a... Do you know what an umbrella is? Yes! Uh, well, a parasol is made of lighter material used to block out the sun. Is you it would pretty? have to hold it, though. But it is more right Well, here. there's one that's just a hat. It's the best of both worlds, I hear. Touches her ears and thinks on it. You know, one of the products I saw at market was this um, metal helm, but it had two small kegs attached to the side and straws going up and into the bottom. You know, we had someone come through the chapel wearing that. It, he claimed he was number one. Of what? Uh, we never found out. We drained him and ate him. Uh, well, but his hat was quite was... useful. We helped it to use to teach the young ones how to wean. Did no more of him come through with the, with his hat? No. All we know that his name was Schmitty Wargerman Jensen and he was number one. But we're not quite sure. No, perhaps the number one was because it's only one of him. Perhaps! You may have solved a mystery that has plagued my people for years. 
All right, so you all are able to uh, pack up fairly easily uh, and head back out onto the road. Uh, still heading north, I'm I'm assuming. Yeah. All yes. right. Still going towards the Panu Republic. You can definitely do that. Uh, traffic's a little bit lighter today. There's fewer people on the road, um, but it's still clear out, and it begins to warm up as you all travel along. Uh, can I get, uh, for the first few hours of your travel, can I get everybody to roll me their perception check? Four. Eight, Eighteen. Seven. With a natural one for five. That's fine. Uh, the rest of you are all distracted by something. I'll let you decide what. But all right, as you're walking along and using your cane, uh, you smack something on the side of the road made of wood. Not moving. I, I stop and then just hit it again. Smack it. Sounds like wood. I kind of turn my head around to hear nobody responding. So I'm just going to like slide my hand down my cane until I find it and figure out what it is. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, before I reveal what it is, uh, what are the three of you doing together that has you all distracted? Wow, that's a full rainbow all the way. A double rainbow. Oh my God, it's a double rainbow. It's a double rainbow all the way. This tries to look at it, but she's blinded for one round because oh, it's so bright. It's so vivid. It's from a double rainbow. Yuisa, it's a double rainbow. It's like your arms, you have double arms and it's a double rainbow. If we had a small box that can <laughs> take a portrait of this moment, do you think I could get it so where if I flex, the double rainbow could go into my muscles? Yes. Do it and I'll draw you. <gasps> I'll draw you like that. How about that? DMs in the audience, let your players narrate their fails. So you'll get some funny stuff out of it. Uh, but yes, you all can be blinded and or enamored by the double rainbow that is apparently in the sky today. Um, all right. As you begin to feel these uh, wooden objects, you realize that you're feeling three wooden coffins stacked on top of each other. Let's go. Oh, that's that's familiar. And I'll immediately press my ear against them just to hear if anybody's inside <laughs> out of habit. Roll me investigation. Uh, 15. There's no sound coming from inside. OK. Yeah. Huh. I'm going to, like, try to lift one to see if, if I can, like, hear if anything shift in there to like, get a sense of weight. Yeah, uh, you go to lift it feels like a large empty wooden box essentially nothing moves inside but I can feel that th I can feel that it is the shape of a coffin yeah all right so doing that I kind of feel it and then I'm just gonna say out loud go did anybody around here leave three coffins what what often Where? hands point at the point at them that I'm that I'm have my hands on these three. they're empty well I'm Fresh out of lozenges, if you're coughing. No, no. No. Fiskworth is just like, as she's shading her eyes the best she can. Oh, I haven't seen those in a hot minute. I just knock on it to reverberate the hollow sound. They, they seem to be empty, but there's three of them. We should peek inside. They're goodies inside coffins. Always good things. Well, in my opinion, good things. Well, I, I believe that they're empty, but you are certainly welcome to look inside. <laughs> if I go over, do they have names on them? No, there are there are no names on them. You know, I've been told that we should stay away from like stealing from coffins. How else would you store your food? Come on. And Fist just opens it up, looking at Iwiza like, really? Come on. You open it up. There's nothing inside. Oh, well, someone's already raided this pantry, so it seems. Let's check the other one. Sue along, help me move this. Pantry. Yes. What else would you call it? Fiskorth, the, uh, lifting up. This is where we store our dead to remember them. What? Or if you're tired. Uh. No, we... These are for storage. You're telling yeah. me you, of the dead. 
you use these to honor your debt. They're not for food. No. No. No, because we would put blood cheese in these as well. It's how we aged our cheeses. And bodies, of course. But I know that's morally reprehensible now. Well, I mean, I slept in one of these for a while. Well, that's understandable. We need to get you cushions, Arat. Vampires do that? It, it's the easiest way to keep it, all of the sunlight out for the true vampires. I did not have to worry about it. I found that out later. This course, as we're all talking, is just hoping there's a treat in the second one. But now she's a little concerned. Like, you're putting your... This is, like, honorable dead? Like, you don't just, like, assimilate and join a larger blood god when you die? But that's for later. It depends on who you worship. Is the second one empty? I'm going to put them out like shell game style so this court can rummage through either or. Enrichment for your hooling. You open the second one. It's also empty. Oh, I'm feeling like we're at a birthday party with no presents. This might be like an art piece or something. Oh, well, I hope we don't upset the artist then. Uh, interesting place to put it, I must say. And she, as she wrenches open the third one. You wrench it open and also empty. Maybe they fell off like a cart or something. In a perfect stack? I don't know. Maybe they fell on the side of the road and someone tripped over them. Like that big woman we saved from the, f- the swamp. She was it very big. She was. She certainly was. <laughs> Sulong is going to close the coffin Fiskorth has and restack them. All I know is it's not our problem. No, I just bumped into it, so I was wondering if perhaps maybe if I called out, somebody nearby would claim the coffins. (laughs) We should leave. Okay. Farewell, coffins. Bye-bye. Just pat pat the top coffin as he walks away. So, Fiskorth, when you mean food, do you mean, like, people or... I mean, yes, people on occasion. We just figured out it was the most uh, efficient way for storage, as well as, well, I'm not sure how common it is outside of the chapel and other hooling colonies, but we would make our most delectable fermented blood cheese. Crumbles delicately, has an earthy, and like she's drooling as she describes this earthy, savory, irony feel that just melted on your tongue. Delicious when spread on fingers, but I understand now, again, I'm not doing that, and I'm no longer practicing that art, because they were people. So I guess your people liked finger foods. Everyone roll me a history check. 19. 19, baby. 17. You, as Fiskorth describes blood cheese, you've all vaguely heard through one avenue or another. So long, maybe it was from, I don't know, one of the kids that got in trouble spreading rumors in school, Yuiza. You might have heard it from your aunt, your uncle, maybe even a mention from your dad. Arat, you've been around long enough to know that a Huling blood cheese is a highly sought commodity because the group that makes it uh, does not trade with outsiders. There is actually a black market value for this type of cheese. It is incredibly expensive to get. There's a slight pause as Arat says, Did you know how to make this? Or was this something that simply happened amongst your people? Oh, I didn't make it. You see, I was an acolyte of the temple, so I didn't quite engage in that. But my mother did. In fact, when she wasn't guarding the front of the cavern, she would sometimes trade it and she'd bring back these beautiful things spread on hides. What's the term? Portraiture! Portraiture! Yes, and she'd decorate our cavern. She gets all misty-eyed as she just goes on and on about how her mother engaged in the black market with blood cheese made from people and then getting portraits of dead people. Hmm. Fascinating. Interesting. Oh, but I wouldn't give her some blood cheese that wasn't made from people. I could probably, you know, I could probably replicate it if I had animal blood and if we meet my mother's, which I don't think we will now that I think of it. If we have animal blood stares at Stinky Boy. <laughs> don't you ever think about it. 
it stinky might boy's have a just off. Flavor. Yeah, stinky boy's just off to the side, chewing on some grass nearby. Wretched little monster. And lifts his head and looks at you, Fizzcorth. Not a thought behind those eyes. No, I look into those eyes and I see like this, like when you put on the ring and you just see the eyes of Sauron. That's what Fiskorth <laughs> sees. <laughs> we must move on quickly and just swoops away from him. I wasn't meant for long distances. I was built for sprinting. We're deadly over short distances. Just happily walking. Okay. Uh, you all can begin your walk again. Um, there's more people now, mostly coming from the north towards you. Um, a lot of people get heading off to trade their wares. You see some um, folks getting ready to set up fruit stalls as it's getting closer to midday. Uh, you can pick up some more items along the way if you want to stop somewhere for lunch and have a little snack. Are there any bananas? Um... Not this far north. Mm. Uh, I'd probably have to go like to Port City. Yeah, uh, you you would need to go go a bit more south, um, probably closer to where Uis is from, to be getting them. Um, this far north, you're getting a lot more um, apples. There are some oranges that do grow this far north, um, and there are some uh, lemon trees that are able to grow this far north to get the citrus in. Uh, but you're gonna find things that are a bit more cold tolerable as you're you're getting more towards the snowy winter area up here. I'll I'll buy some lemon for tonight's dinner. Like spread that over some conies. I would like to buy a few apples and oranges. You can. She's been Definitely sharing her fruit with uh, precious Stinky Boy. Uh, he is a big fan of the apples. Citrus, not so much. I don't think deer eat citrus. I'm not quite sure. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't like citrus. Actually, it's one of those like yeah. plants along with garlic that you can grow that keeps them out. Yeah, mm -hmm. she will. She will give him apples. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can. You can definitely do that. Um, he is glued to your side, uh, enjoying his little snacks that you're giving him. Um, as you travel along and things get a little bit busier, uh, you pass by some more of the. Now more sparse forest, you can see through the trees, you can see through to where the river is uh, that comes down from the mountains. Um, it's the same river that passed by Dull Hen um, and flows southward. Uh, and as you do, uh, everybody roll me another perception check. 11. Five. <laughs> I rolled a 15. Uh, Fiskworth and Yuiza. Uh, you both see about 20 feet from the road a medium-sized statue carved from obsidian with large ruby eyes that gleam in the sunlight. Uh, below it, there's a brass plaque with writing on it. People are just leaving everything on the sides of the road, huh? Fiskorp has this deer in headlights look as she sees it. Like, just, oh. 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 Yes, I thought that was something from home. Let's see what that is. I might be able to identify it. I am a scholar after all. You are. I would like to see what the plaque says. There's a statue on the side of the road with a black and ruby eyes. Oh, that's an odd place for precious gemstones, but okay. I know. I'm surprised no one's have taken them before. What does the plaque say? Uh, as you get close in common, uh, Fiskorth, you read the plaque and it says, A test of faith in the jaws of the beast. And you look up at the statue and you notice that its mouth is open. A test of faith in the jaws of the beast. I wonder what that means. And as she's reading this, she's putting her hand into the beast's mouth. Okay. Uh, you reach into the beast's mouth and you feel something lock around your wrist. I think I'm stuck, everyone. Fiskorth. What you know, did you I do? I can't say anything because I would have done the same. Uh, her little nub is stuck inside the mouth of the statue now. Okay, well, this is a test of faith, it says. 
then. So do you just have faith your hand's not going to come off? Maybe. I suppose so. That's a start. A beast! Great statue! Can I come out, please? Fiskorth, do you try to do anything to extract your hand? I like, I wiggle it a little bit. Okay. Um, that's, that's fine. Uh, after a few moments standing there, wiggling your little nubbin uh, inside, you feel something smooth come up into the area where your little wig nub is. Almost like something's being pressed into your hand. It feels like glass. And you feel whatever is around your wrist release. Wait, uh, well, you just had to ask it nicely. What's this? Uh, as you pull it out, roll me a d100. Uh, oh, yippee. I'm going to roll one of my nice Cthulhu dice for this, actually. Uh oh. <laughs> I rolled a 99. A 99. Which is a critical failure and call it Cthulhu. <laughs> But not here, as you pull out a small potion of healing. You get a regular potion of healing. Oh. She immediately gives it to Arat. In return for the stuff, for the snuggle beast that you got me at the fair. Oh. Should Thank we all you. try what, what? to put our hands in? It seems trustworthy. I'd rather not. What, what? It's healing potion, see? You can tell from the way the alchemical formulae begins to bubble at the top and frothing slightly from the fermentation. But yes, if you ask the beast nicely, it lets your hand go. Put it in. There's also a little label on the side with some neat handwriting. Uh, I will add that potion of healing to your deck on, or to your uh, sheet on Foundry. Yuiza right. will stick her hand in. All right. Uh, Yuiza, you feel the same mechanism clamp down on your wrist as you reach into the mouth. Do you do anything? She's just like, um, she's just kind of like, she's a little bit of a shimmy just to kind of feel around the mouth. But It's very smooth on the inside. Hmm. Almost like someone didn't want people to get hurt when they interacted with us. Huh. This is really smooth. It's really smooth carving. This is actually pretty nice. As you feel around on the inside, you feel from the bottom something come up into the reservoir where your hand is. Something glass as well presses into your hand. Go ahead and roll me a d100 as the mechanism releases your wrist. 36. 36. Oh, cute. Uh, you receive a potion of growth. Wow. What is this? Is it like a, s a specific color? Uh, it is red as well, but it glows a little bit, whereas healing potions don't have a glowing shine to them. I will drag that into your inventory. Does it have instructions on the side? It will have instructions on the side. <laughs> cool. It says drink me. <laughs> uh, and it is now in your inventory. Ooh. Anyone else give me a try? With you, is a, with you as you're doing that and hearing too long, go for it. I'm just going to say... Are we all sticking our hands into the strange statue's mouth? Yeah, I got a potion of growth. I was going to say, what would I say to make it comfortable for you? Yes or no? And Sulong will shove his hand inside the statue's mouth. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you do anything to extract your hand after the mechanism clamps down on your wrist? Yeah, just feel around, I guess. Kind of bounce in the spot. Yeah, you feel it's just like as Yuiza described, it's smooth on the inside. There's nothing that your, your fingers could snag on or uh, grab onto. And after a few moments, uh, the mechanism releases and you feel glass being pushed into your hand. Uh, middle of the road 50. Middle of the roll road 50. Uh, you receive a potion of speed. <laughs> Ooh. So long about to start zooming. He just listens to all what's going on and just like head like back and forth. Uh, Sulong will turn to Yuiza. What do you think would be more better for the both of us? Me being fast or me being strong versus you being fast versus you being strong? Uh, I'll trade you the potion of speed for that giant growth. Deal. 
We're like, Monkeo, you should try this. And Fiskworth kind of gives Arad a gentle little shove. Should Stinky Boy try this too? <laughs> yes, put his neck in. I would like to see what happens. Arat, like, Ar Arat just stands there for a second and quietly says a string of words that only Fiskworth can understand due to the shared languages. And they are words that she probably was told never to say while she was growing up as he just puts his hand as he puts his hand into the mouth. <laughs> okay. This is where Fiskworth learns that Arat has a sailor mouth in other languages. <laughs> You do that and you feel the same mechanism everybody else felt. Something clamps down on your wrist. Do you try to pull your arm out or do anything to get out? I don't, but because nobody has described it further, I immediately start like touching the rest of the face. I'm trying to feel if I can discern, like, does this face look like something that I have felt or had described me before? How are the eyes set in? Like feeling the mechanism of the jaw. I'm just, ex I'm examining now because like, well, I can't do anything, so sure. It feels like a cross between a dragon and a dog's head. So not a creature I'm familiar with. Somewhat reminiscent of how Nismat's head is shaped, almost like a Feywild dragon. But okay. it's, it's more of a um, artistic representation of what one may be. Okay. Do I feel like an actual like hinge thing on the jaw or does it seem to no. just do it on its own? Okay. Uh. The eyes, like the rubies, are like deep inset, I imagine. Uh, no, they're pretty flush with the front of it. I'm going to run my fingers along the edge of the ruby. Like, I'm not trying to take it, but I'm literally just seeing, does this pop off? If I just touch it? Yeah, uh, you run your fingers along the edge and it is flush with where it is mounted. There is no way that you can tell to pry it out. Uh, yeah, I'm literally going to be like, as much of the statue that he can touch while his hand is stuck in there, he's going to just be like, are there symbols? What is what is it depicted with, etc.? Just learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no um, there's no further symbols uh, on the outside of this. After a few moments, the mechanism does release. And uh, go ahead and roll me that D100. This takes it goes. Thank you. Uh, 16. 16. I got the low end on this one. You get the potion of diminution. Run my fingers along the uh, the label and just go. Okay. As you run your fingers along the label on it, uh, you feel also along the bottom, and embossed on the bottom of the bottle is Polly's perfume and potions. Do I know that shop? Roll me a history check. I hope this is a really elaborate advertisement campaign. Uh, 16. 16. You never went, but you do vaguely remember there being a Polly's Potions in the capital, but you don't remember anything mentioning perfume. This could be a new owner, or it could be just a coincidence. Maybe you misremembered the name. Okay. See, so yeah, I'm feeling it. I'll just, yeah, flip it over. I feel it. Let's go. Must be uh, a variation on the store. Wait, you're saying the Beast owns a shop? He's a merchant? Are we supposed to pay him? No, whoever, uh, whoever put these in here, wherever they came from, must have gotten them from this shop in the capital. Uh, it used to just be a potion shop, but I guess they expanded. Oh, curious. Well, thank you, Beast, for your trust and these potions. We'll make good use of them. As, uh, she passed it on the nose. <laughs> as Arat shows you all uh, where it says Polly's Perfume and Potions, um, and you all check your bottles, you all realize that on the bottom of all of your bottles, it says Polly's Perfume and Potions. Maybe we can find him in the capital and get more potions. Maybe this is what they were trying to do all along. It is a market employ. Perhaps, perhaps they will be able to explain it as well. Yes, but at least we do know that. The, well, I know that this shop is still there and they are supplying potions and more. So, yes. Well, now I want to visit them because I would like to smell nice. Sometimes you just can't, you know, take a dip in a river if there's no river or like a lake or something. 
I believe the server that way. Okay. Poor Arat. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, you are all able to, if you are done here, uh, continue on your way, should you wish. Stinky boy is following close at your heels, Yuiza. Um, and uh, as you carry on, it's a, a rather quiet day on the road. And you travel for another few hours before nightfall begins to approach. You still have probably two days ahead of you. And the nearest roadside inn is still probably another night's rest away. So you'll have to sleep outside for at least one more night. Okay, not well, too bad. Do we want to do the same uh, watch pattern? Yes! I, we can. We can. I was going to say I'm happy to take first since I did last, but if you want to stay the same, oh, we it's can. It's up to you. I just, I prefer first or last. Because then I don't have to wake up in like the middle of my sleep and, you know... Well, if nobody wants to change how they do things, then we can stay the same. Otherwise, I am fine with whichever works. Okay. In the meantime, I will see if more of those wretched tree-dwelling monstrosities are around. Squirrels? Yes! They've mauled my face! Look! Well, why weren't you up in the trees? That's where they live. I was making sure there were no foes up there. But that's like where them. they live. That's their house. Well, maybe they shouldn't live in trees near our camp. Where's exactly. the one it's intruding? like if someone came into your cave and was like, oh, you shouldn't be in this cave, it's mine now. Well, we ate them. And that's not a good practice either, so maybe we shouldn't mow well, people then don't in trees. Well, go into their house. Ow. RJ, what's your role on survival? Uh, 19. 19. Yes, um, the trees are a little denser here than they were previously on the road, um, but you are able to travel in a little ways. Um, there's a spot further in where there's a circular clearing um, just uh, just amongst the trees. Um, there is a another fire pit in the center. This one looks a little bit more recent. Um, the only place where the trees really break is towards the river where there is a rock. Uh, that's perched between some of the trees. It's rather large. Um, but other than that, it's fully surrounded by the trees. We can actually take a dip here. Um, why don't y'all go up and clean yourselves and I'll set up camp and then we'll just switch, you know? So are you saying you're stinky? I mean, long day on the road? Well, who wouldn't appreciate a nice bath you can just say we're stinky no that that's your pet he's precious stinky boy yeah oh uh yuisa i bought some lemons at one of the stalls so you could probably use that tonight with like some of the leftover birds oh yeah i can make some if you'd like i can make something tonight yeah okay i'll do that i got some spices and I'll, I have some bread. I can make some, like, chicken sandwiches. We should get a sourdough starter that we just take with us. I could put it, I could buy cheese and then wine and put them in my bag of molding. Yeah, that's too long as going to set up camp. She's, she's going to set up a fire this time and uh, start, like, uh, cooking some dinner now. My turn. Fiskworth is going to be the first to take her bath. But she looks very sheepish about it, just dipping her toe in lightly. For like, she kind of rushes over to Arat and says, Arat, do you keep a secret? Uh, usually. We are supposed to all bathe in that river, yes? Uh, I, that's the intention, though I suppose it's every person's choice. I wish to conform to the ways of the service so that I might blend in better, but I can't swim. Oh, do, do, do you need somebody to be in there with you? I mean, I know that we, we all clean ourselves differently, I imagine. You have different yes, customs. Yes, usually but... I use my tongue for that. That's perfectly fine. But apparently I stink from a day on the road. So please help me with the water, lest a, and another a hooligan grabs me. We don't know what's at the bottom of it. 
Uh, certainly, yes, I'll, I'll help. I might as well, might as well take care of myself as well. Same time. I'm blessed, truly. And then, yeah, so like our walk over to whoever, and then again, Arat has no sense of like personal modesty or, you know, hesitation because he can't see it. It doesn't bother him. This court so does. Like, She's covering her eye with her wing. Yeah, so he's just like, okay, everything's off, enter the water. He's like, it'll be fine. Come on. Her feet, she does not let go of Arat. Like, she is dug in, claw almost piercing his skin until her feet touch the bottom and she feels okay. Buddy. She's nervous. She needs floaties. Get this bat some floaties. It's 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 a slow moving river, so just you know, do not uh, make sudden mo- motions, and you should be fine. Is something going to grab me if I make sudden motions, Arat? No, you may slip and fall, though, and I don't want that. Okay, oh, very well. Yeah, as you um, as you help Fiskworth into the water, Arat, the water is just barely waist high here, and it's it's a very lazy point in the river, um, and there's not many rocks around to slip on. It's it's a it's rather sandy here as well. Um, nice refreshing spot to take a little dip. Uh, while the two of you are managing that, uh, Yuiza and Sulong, what are you guys up to? Setting uh, up the tents. Mm-hmm. Yuiza was going to make sandwiches, but I'm going to do a lemon pepper chicken with cilantro rice. We have most of those ingredients. <laughs> yeah, it's just because like, cilantro and spices might be able to like she might probably pack some um, and you know, you just need pepper, a little pepper, chicken and cilantro rice. Okay, dinner's ready and she'll like go like a little bit near the river. It's like dinner's ready. <laughs> just sopping wet, emerging from the river, shaking like a dog. You saw how close are standing. Oh no, she's she's only like she's behind this tree line and like says dinner dinner's ready, but she doesn't uh, get closer. She doesn't want to know what's going on in there. <laughs> well, Fiskorth shakes herself like a wet dog and then happily skips and oh, I've got dinner is ready. We should hurry. And she reaches out a claw to help him. You can definitely do that um, as you two rejoin the others. Um, Yuisa has a meal prepared for you. Is there any conversation you all have over dinner? So long, I'll finish up quick, go, get into the r- river and wash yourself off and then come back. But Yuisa will do the same kind of finish quick and while the rest are still eating, wash up a little bit and then come back, uh, bringing out her hair. And just like, oh, I have some pastries left for dessert if we want some. You know, like mid-conversation, like, and they did that to a great, believe it or not. Oh, more sweets. Thank you, Yuisa. <laughs> you should think I, she's the one that set this up. I kind of ate the last bag of pastries that she gave me. Uh, but that's fine. I don't blame you. They are intoxicating. Right? Who are those, those, um, mint cookie? I think for Yuiza and Too Long, if either of them get like get close to Ara and they're still wet, he just sort of like reaches out with one finger, just oh, just he's just pressed digitating everybody dry. Just uh, Yuiza's actually dry when she comes back. He goes, he goes, oh okay. Just press the digitator wet instead. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Cleans herself again. <laughs> Man, I'm getting dinner and a show. I just learned this trick. Leave me alone. Poor you, Isa. Um, yeah, uh, you all can go ahead and certainly do that. Um, you have a nice conversation over dinner. The fire gets going. Precious stinky boy wanders off and wanders back a few times, coming and going as he pleases. Why can't you just get lost, you horrible little monster? Go! Go out into the woods! Your family is there! Precious Stinky Boy comes over to you and Arat Fiskorth and looks at Arat, his 
ears going back and forth as deer ears do. Oh, it's you. I thought you had gotten lost for the third time. What do you want, beast? I'm going to take the the coffee and whatnot from like from Yuiza because I like we're we stuck we're sticking with the same uh the same orders like this way I'll just make it. Oh thank you. That's so nice of you. As they say a cold brew. I could I could probably make that work. There's enough river water. Uh it's fine. This is okay. regular coffee for now. Very well. Okay. I am going to keep watch. Um, you guys go to rest. I will wake you up this course in about two hours, I think. Best of luck. I will try my best. Okay, go, go sleep. Go, go, go. <laughs> Just follow, follow her off this. Okay. Uh, you all settle down, Yuiza. You set yourself up for watch. Uh, Stinky Boy settles down next to you between you and the fire, enjoying the warmth as the chill comes into the air in the evening. Uh, is there anything in particular you're doing tonight? Um, I think tonight she is just kind of appreciating uh, the sunset while petting precious Stinky Boy just kind of laying with him and I think part of her mind after being traveling for so long just kind of reminds her how she used to be on the road before Dulhen and why she was on the road and all that's happened and um, Arabelle or not Arabelle and knowing her father and seeing the note and wondering what's going on and she kind of gets lost in kind of this um swirl of thoughts as it's kind of overthinking a little bit okay yeah it's 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 very confusing everything that's happened to you within the span of just a couple weeks and as you ruminate on this and the crickets begin to chirp in the trees roll me a perception check seven I'll use my inspiration from Levi. Okay. And roll again. Eight. <laughs> Your watch passes by uneventfully. Okay. She's just sitting there, uh, just petting precious stinky boy, giving him some apple every now and then. Okay. At the end of your two hours, you can go ahead and wake up Fiskworth. She gets up, stretches up a little bit, and just uh, peeks in slightly to the tent and just says, Fiskorth! Fiskorth is already awake, and you, in fact, see just her little eyes staring, like, inches from yours. There is just... They they they, they, they open up... <laughs> they open up the tent flap and just see that. And there is just... You know when someone's so scared, they just stop moving. Yuisa, I couldn't sleep. Uh, oh, uh, hi. I had a dream about you. Uh, you had a baby. There was a baby, oh, Yuisa. Oh, uh, no. It was It was just like, it wasn't even like an infant. It was just a little Yuisa, and it went around stealing coins. It was fabulous, but it is time for my watch now, yes? Yes. Wow. So it was just like a little me? Was like a, like a younger me or just like smaller version of adult me? You scaled down to about the size of a marionette, I'd say. Oh, that would be so convenient. I could steal things from like really small spaces. Yes, yeah, so you two got into a fight in the death because she stole one of your daggers out of your pocket. It, it scared me so much it woke me up. You know, I do like my daggers. I would fight my tiny pup aversion to the death because of my daggers. As would I. That's something now, I would do. Yeah. Now, dream of not little use, but of good rest. Oh, thank you. Good night. Also, please never do that ever again. I got so scared. What do you mean? As she stares with her big ruby eyes. Nothing. Good night. <laughs> good night. 
the precious stinky boy will probably uh, stick close to the uh, fire with you and Sulong in the tent. Uh, there's not much room for him, uh, but he's fine. He's used to it. Uh, Fiskorth, what do you do for your watch? I decide to sit on the ground this time. I do not want to test the tree Denzians this time around, but I'm spending it intermittently keeping watch and just turning a suspicious gaze to Stinky Boy as he's like probably adorably sleeping by the fire, but I don't know what he's planning. Maybe he was working with those buskers. Maybe he stole the money and he's just hiding it somewhere in his stink pouch. Uh, yes, as you look him over, you see you see no stink pouch on him, but surely there must be one there. Uh, go ahead and roll me your perception check for your Will watch. Will do. Oh, wow, that's that's a six. That's not good. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. The enemy is in camp. I'm looking at him. <laughs> Luckily, your watch passes by uneventfully. Precious Stinky Boy has a adorable little dream, starts kicking in his sleep as he runs through the forest. And uh, you are able at the end of the two hours to wake up uh, Sulong. Discord repeats the same ritual from last night, and I'm sure Sulong feels those horrible little eyes on him again. Stifling a scream. <laughs> Fiskorth? Yes? You could just tap me awake, you know? I could hurt you that way. I'm pretty thick skinned. Yes, you are. I will do that next time, but it does seem to work when I just stare at you. Besides, you're so peaceful. Do you know that sometimes when you're asleep, your arms play that one game? Uh, the one with the fist, uh, the two fingers, and the full hand. Rochambeau. Uh, I think. Blade shield spell. Which? <laughs> yes, that's it. You should give them something. You could teach them to crochet, perhaps, but I'm going to go rest. Good, Good night. You as well, and keep an eye on that despicable little creature sharing our abode. But yeah, Sulong will crawl out of the tent, give a little stretchy, and sit by the fire. Okay. Uh, what do you do for your um, for your watch, Sulong? Tonight he's going to pull out his journal and write a letter to his mother's. Okay. Just updating them. He's moving mm -hmm. through the, to the capital. Things are have been weird. Love you lots. So long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can definitely spend your time doing that. Um, as you sit down to take your watch, uh, Precious Stinky Boy is still in the middle of that dream. It's a really good one. The, the, does a little nose scrunch in his sleep. and He's frolicking. Yeah. yeah he's having a, having a wonderful time. Uh, go ahead and roll me that uh, perception check for your watch. 21. All uh, right. Um, you feel it getting a bit colder over the course of your watch, but nothing out of the ordinary seems to happen. I think in, and when it feels a little bit colder, he actually does gently pick Stinky Boy up and places him in his lap to just, like, get that extra body heat. Yeah, but when the shift ends, uh, heads to Fis and Rat's tent, and same ritual as before, tap, 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 tap on the foot. The same thing happens, uh, except Ara didn't eat yesterday, so, like, it's fangs out, and he still manages to stop himself, but this one was a little bit more... Like intentional before he stops himself. You, you, you must uh, not jar me like this, Dylan. It, it's your turn to watch. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. You, you all right? Yes. No. Sorry. Uh. Uh. Disturbances in the night. I'm consider myself prepared. <laughs> Right. All right. Well, um, 
Stinky Boy's having one of the best dreams I've ever seen a musk deer have. Um, so if you want to filter that noise out. Uh, other than that, all's quiet. It got a little cold all of a sudden, but that's about it. Good to know. Ara is lost in thought. He has never tried to pull a dream from an animal, and now he's rolling over the logistics of that. Um, yeah. Good night. Good night. And uh, I will walk out of my tent with my stick, uh, sit next to the fire, and immediately press to digitate it bigger. Like, just stoke the embers immediately so it's a fire again. Yeah, you can stoke it, um, throw some more gathered firewood onto it. Uh, what do you do for your for your watch? Uh, so take out the wild oracle card again and burn it uh, to sense hostilities around me. I am going to actually take like my hand covering off, just put the uh, the exposed hand down on precious stinky boy's back very gently. And now he's just like going to see like, does this even work like this? Because this is not something he's ever considered before. Like, anim- like he's never considered, do animals dream? Do animals dream substantially enough for this to mean anything? So he's like, does it work? <laughs> you attempt to do this. Uh, remind me again how your dream feeding works. It's it's like, it's pure psychic vampirism. It's pulling the dream. It's pulling the dreams out uh, into nourishment. We have not. We haven't well, given it mechanics, done- right? We haven't given it mechanics, yeah. and I've and so far it hasn't been done on sleeping people on legitimate dreams. It's been more like a mm-hmm. psychic vampirism as, aspiration thing. So I don't know what I'm, happens with uh, a sleep people. Yeah. I'm going to say that it's the equivalent of eating like a Halloween like snack size candy bar. Okay. Like it's it's not enough to sustain you, but. I don't know. You vaguely smell like clover now, and there's no clovers around. Let's put it back and go. Oh, um, no, no, no! I know that. I suppose. Go ahead and roll me your perception check. Okay. Hey, that's a nat twenty for a twenty-five. Okay. Net 20 for a 25. Like Sulong said, it is colder than when you first arrived at this location. And as you sit here uh, trying to see if feeding on precious stinky boy will work, you realize that it's begun to snow. And... As you stand up to look about and kind of feel around for where all this snow is, you realize that it hasn't just started to snow. Your feet are in about three inches of snow. There is a blanket of snow suddenly covering everything. What do you do? Uh, immediately press to digitate the fire bigger uh, so that it's magically fueled so it doesn't get extinguished. So this is now like full on full on campfire. Yeah, you feel the fire flare up and it doesn't seem to be affected by the snowfall. It doesn't appear that the wood that you put on it is wet. Uh, But with your nat 20 for a 22, You hear something behind you coming from where the rock is. Something is being flipped over and over in a hand. I am going to. I'll pick up my stick. I have I have my deck holstered and against the belt. Um. Put my scarf on, that my new scarf. And then, uh, yeah, I've got, I already have the walk, walk dagger just like tucked back in the waistband, and I'll just get up and slowly walk in the direction. Head up, listening, tilting until I, fe- until I feel like I'm about halfway between that location 
and the camp so as to not disturb anybody with specific talking. I just go, is this your doing? As you say, is this your doing? You hear a voice that is the grinding of ice against ice that crackles with cold. And you hear reciprocity to give the light, reciprocity for the night, reciprocity, never a slight. And that is where we're going to leave it for tonight. 911, I'd like to report a cliffhanger from Sarah Roberts. She is a serial offender. Oh my God. We can't let her get going away with this. Oh. I don't know. I think I'm pretty darn good at it. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> it's criminal. Uh... Thank you to all our patrons and Twitch subscribers for your continued support. This show was made possible by listeners like you. Viscorth was played by Abby. Arat was played by Zachary Vaudo. Louisa was played by Alyssa Vamp. Sue Long was played by RJ. And your GM this evening was Sarah Roberts. Luck and Chaos is recorded live on Thursday nights. If you'd like to join us for a live recording, check out hypegoblin.com forward slash events for the full live schedule. Links to cast social media, third-party supplements used in the game, affiliate links, and the show's Patreon are available in the episode description. A Twist of Fate, Luck and Chaos theme by SneakerNet is available now on Bandcamp. Don't forget to like and review this episode on your platform of choice, and we'll see you all in the next one.